my story takes place at my grandma and grandpa's house. As for a little backstory to the house, it was built in 1943 in an old neighborhood. The house was one floor and had three bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, a porch, and a gigantic backyard. The three rooms were located down a long, narrow hallway, which was always creepy to me. My grandparents' room was at the very end, and my room, which later became the laundry and guest room, was right across from it. Then was Nikki's room, my older sister, which was across from the bathroom. At the start of the hall was the living room, and in the front was the kitchen. At the time, I was about four years old, so I was afraid of the dark. In the middle of the night, I had to use the restroom, so I grabbed my Disney Princess flashlight out of the toy bin and headed down the hall. I got shivers from the AC my grandma had turned on. I finished my business and proceeded to turn off the bathroom light and click on my flashlight. I was right at the door frame when something caught my eye. It was blacker than the pitch black of the house already, and it stood out. Not possibly the mistake of something shining off anything, or a trick of positions. I saw the shadow of a person at the end of the hall. The exact end that my room was at. I was frozen with fear for what was most likely a few seconds, but felt like an eternity. It started to fade, and I made a run for my room. As I passed the spot in which the thing was a few seconds before, I felt something grab my arm. I tripped over a toy as I panicked and jumped into bed, throwing the covers over my head. That's the last time that I got up in the middle of the night. Lesson for everyone out there who may be reading this, and is sane enough to believe me, never touch the shadows. My grandmother owns two beautiful acres of land in Delaware. On the land, she has a barn. The barn is relatively new, built in 2004 and we have had many unexplained activities happen there. One day, I was out in the barn feeding the cat and I felt someone try to push me to the ground. I immediately exited the barn and ran for the house. A few months later, my grandmother was out in the barn and she thought she saw a black creature, like a dog, run across the field into the small patch of trees adjacent to her property. In those patch of trees is an old outhouse and, well, my grandmother explored back there when she first moved in and told us never to go out there. One night, I was playing outside with the dogs. There was the black shadow that moved along the other side of the fence. It couldn't have been the horse because they were away in the barn, locked in for the night. I was freaked out. I went back inside and told my grandmother. That's when she told me about more of her experiences. Three months before, she was feeding the horses when the tractor started up all by itself. Then a few weeks later, she heard knocking and scratching on her window at 3 a.m. and the dogs went crazy. She told me one time she saw a red-black figure walk into the barn through the big lever door and then vanish. About a year ago was the most recent of my experiences. I was in the RV, which is about 20 yards from the barn, when all of a sudden I heard a loud scream come from the barn. I ran for the barn and the door was slammed shut behind me, and writing on the wall, it said, Vas es non esposia hic. I was frozen. To this day, I have no idea what it said. I guess it was in Latin? But ever since then, neither I nor my grandmother have ever had any more experiences in that barn. My question is, what was that thing and what did it want? Was the well some sort of portal? I am still blown away by all of this. This is one of my many ghost spirit experiences, but definitely the most cherished. In 2003, when I turned 13, my mother and I moved to Middletown, Delaware. My mom rented out an old, fee-simple house that was built in the 1700s, so the possibility of it being haunted was expected. The day we first arrived, I told my mom, let me scope the house out first, which meant let me walk through it and see what kind of vibe I get. I did this with every house we moved into. As soon as I stepped into the house, I felt a calming and peaceful aura immediately. 
Once I started walking around a bit, I felt someone walking with me, and in ways I cannot explain, we engaged in conversation without me actually talking out loud, which was something I had never experienced, and even though very odd to me, it did not scare me. The spirit that was talking to me was that of a little girl named Sarah. She told me many things about her house and her life. I felt so privileged to be welcomed into the house by the true owner. The little girl told me that she was eight years old and she died of the flu, along with her father. I can't recall Sarah's father's name, but I do remember his actions. The little girl told me her father enjoyed to drink and coincidentally, the bottles of vodka and such my mom had sitting out on the mantle would oddly fill up or would become almost empty even when no one was there to drink them. Another thing that Sarah pointed out to me before anything happened was that her father did not like loud music. And again, coincidentally, every time my mom would have the music on, it would almost magically get turned down to an almost whisper. The house itself was amazing. It was a fixer-upper, not cosmetically pretty, but it had beauty beyond looks. It had history. Sarah showed me a little wooden panel that opened in the staircase that led to an underground railroad passage in the basement. The most common thing that people noticed was footsteps being heard in the dining room. It wasn't exactly footsteps, it was Sarah dancing. It didn't take long to get used to that. After talking with Sarah, we realized that we were meant to meet, and me moving to the house felt like fate. The funny thing is that right after having my first conversation with Sarah, I told my mom everything and she told me, which later was proof for all of the strange happenings in the house. But the thing that really surprised me was when the neighbor attempted to tell me a story I told my mom about the girl and her father, but I finished his story before he started. My mother and I have since moved back to New Jersey, but I will forever remember Sarah, her father, and the house at 55 East Main Street. After I had my baby, I began to hear voices of a young child and another I cannot tell the sex of and a man's voice. One night, I decided to take a bath while my newborn was sleeping. My room has a bathroom in it and my baby was sleeping in my room. For some reason, there is a window in a wall that shared the room and the bathroom. I just put the blinds up for privacy. Well, while I was in the bath, I was looking at my face in the mirror in front of me and I saw a circle of light on my chin. So I got closer to the mirror and it just sat there. So I decided I was going to touch it. But as soon as I lifted my finger to the light, it started to slowly move down to my neck and then it was gone. I thought maybe it was water, so I put a droplet of water on my face. It didn't look like the light that I had saw and it ran down way faster than the light did. I shook it off and started bathing. All of a sudden, I heard a voice in my ear, like someone was standing right beside me. The voice was loud, and they said, your baby is awake, except they said my baby's name. I got out of the tub and hurried up and got a towel. I looked out of the blind and my baby's legs started to move. A couple days later, I began to hear a little boy hollering mommy in my ear. This little boy would holler mommy in my ear for a couple of nights. One night, I was laying in my bed and I decided to put a pillow over my head. All of a sudden, the boy screamed mommy like he was in distress and his voice sounded like it was getting farther and farther, like someone was dragging him away. In the spring of this year, I was having a problem with my sinuses in my cheek. It felt like it was on fire. But anyway, I begged and pleaded to God to heal me. I laid down on my side and after a while, I felt someone put their arm over the top of me. Like they were leaning over top of me. I started to panic, but then a face came really close to my face. And I was looking straight into their eyes. My body and my mind calmed down and I can hear a man speaking. The strange thing is I couldn't understand what he was saying because he was speaking in a different language. After he said what he said, he gave out a big laugh and he was gone. The next day, I had no more problems with my sinus. My name is Stephanie and this current day and time, I am 21 years old. I've been witnessing paranormal activity and entities since I was very young. 
and I'm about to tell you one of my first experiences that I've ever had. My mother is very spiritual and has always told me that I'm very sensitive and there's an energy about me that she feels attracts people from the other side, as she is the same way. My mother and father bought our house in central Delaware in the early 80s before I was born. The house was built in the 1900s and is part of the historic district. Shortly after moving in, my mother did a little remodeling and a few years later, I was born and grew up in the house until we moved to southern Delaware, right before I entered high school. We still own this house. In fact, I currently live here again as an adult with my boyfriend and a few of his friends. My mother split the house into a duplex, and one side is currently rented out to me. Well, when I was 8 years old, it was a normal school night and my mother had put me to bed around 9 o'clock. I awoke some time later, as it was pretty evident no one else was up in the house. All was quiet, and the hall light outside my bedroom door was turned off. The only light that was around was the street light that shone through my bedroom window. I opened my eyes, and at the foot of my bed stood a man. I can only describe him as being a butler. He was tall, wore a black suit with long coattails, white gloves, and held a silver tray on the palm of his hands. The man in the suit just seemed to look down at me, with no real emotion in his eyes. And thinking it was a dream, I slowly drifted off to sleep without feeling any real reason for alarm. I never told my mother. What makes this true story even more unnerving is, is the fact that before I moved into the house a little over a year ago, my mom and I were cleaning it out to get ready for a new tenant that would be renting out the other side of the house, and me who was renting the other side. We were in the attic, which has a really cool wooden spiral staircase, scrubbing the walls and floors since it had been uninhabited for a while. I was coming down the stairs and as I reached the bottom, I saw a man in a suit walk down the hall from the back bedroom of the front bedroom. No one was in the house but my mom and I. I flew back up the attic stairs, cursing and shaking, and told my mother what I had seen. I said that I seen that man that resembled a butler walk through the upstairs part of the house. My mom stopped and caught her breath. The next thing she said really freaked me out. I had never told her of my experience as a child. She looked at me with strange eyes and said, A butler? Your older sister said that when she was young, she had seen a butler staring at her in the bedroom in the middle of the night. I guess we were making too much noise for him. Since moving in again, I have not seen anything of this man in the suit, but sometimes I feel eyes watching me while I'm in the upper part of the house. And the hair raises on the back of my neck. This was a short, short video, ghouls. Oh my gosh. It was so hard to even find these. Honestly, Delaware, like, you got nothing going on. At least no one posts about it. ay ay, -ay. Well, if you don't want to deal with spirits a lot, move to Delaware, because apparently there's very little to nothing going on, and what is going on seems harmless. But I guess it's nice to have stories that are nice and mild and don't scare people away from spirits, you know, since most spirits are just friendly, you know, curious beings. They just, you know, they just want to hang out, you know, see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, but... Hopefully, next state, which is Florida, I will have a special guest. So, ooh, look forward to that. My last video will be on the top left. My next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen and will also be in the description box below. The secret word for today will be cheese. Because I want cheese. I'm hungry. I recorded this whole thing while starving to death, and I had to edit out all my stomach gurgles. So cheese will be the word. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.